uh, the statement that the November 2020 election was the most secure an election, a secure election in American history. Um, that, in my opinion, is the big lie. Um, you know, that is what we heard in my own state of Georgia. Um, but now we are finding out about massive ballot drop box stuffing, ballot harvesting happening between 2 a.m. and 5 a.m. in the morning. Who takes their ballot down and puts it in the drop box between 2 a.m. and 5 a.m. in the morning? Where one person has admitted to being paid $45,000 to harvest 4,500 ballots, that's $10 a ballot, and that's only one person. They brought evidence to indicate that over 240 people were involved. And if they all harvested only 1,000 ballots each, that would be over 240,000 ballots. And the 2020 election is called the most secure in American history. No, I'm sorry, but that is the big lie. So I have a couple of questions for you now. Um, Ms. Ramachandran, do you believe that photo IDs used to verify voter identity increase election security? Just yes or no would be fine. No, I don't believe photo ID is necessary. So you don't believe that photo ID increases election security, okay? That's fine. Mr. Alex Demos, if you would tell me, do you believe that photo ID increases election security? It's not really my area, sir. I'm sorry, I don't have an opinion. You don't have an opinion on voter identity, okay. All right, Mr. Uh, Rosenberg, I believe if I remember correctly, that you made a comment in your statement that you called photo ID discriminatory against people of color. Um, so do you believe that um, photo ID increases election integrity or election security? ID there, used to vo uh, verify voter identity? Uh, Congressman, there is no evidence of in-person voter fraud, which is the only thing that voter ID protects against. Uh, and in, in Texas. Uh, okay, so just yes or no, yes or no is my question to you. No, I do not believe it increases uh, security because there's no evidence of in-person. Okay, all right, thank you. So you're a no. Mr. Masterson, do you believe that voter ID increases election security by verifying a voter's identity? So uh, each state has their own identification requirements for each part of the process, and uh, I trust the state and local election officials to understand what they need to do. Okay, so you don't have an opinion then? My, I mean, each state sets it and follows it, and my opinion is that they understand what their voters need and how they have to secure the process for each part of the process. Okay, all right. Okay, <clears throat> well, that definitely tells me where each of the witnesses stand when it comes to voter ID. You know, we use, we use, we use government-issued picture ID for many, many things to verify exactly who you are. I couldn't fly here without showing a valid picture ID to TSA at the airport. In fact, even to go eat now in Washington, D.C., you have to have a valid picture ID and a vaccination card to show who you are and the fact that you're vaccinated. And the number one thing that our Constitution <clears throat> protects, and that is one person, one vote. And, um, you know, for folks not to think that, that voter ID is important is just stunning to me. But Mr. Masterson, during your time at CISA, you spent most of it speaking directly to state and local election officials about their cybersecurity capabilities and what resources they need to secure their systems. So what services, what CISA services had the greatest positive effect on election security in your opinion? Yeah, I appreciate the question, Representative. Uh, in, in my opinion, uh, those services uh, that we provide at no cost out to those mid to small counties, uh, including some in your home state, uh, that allow them to identify possible vulnerabilities in, in the systems and mitigate those vulnerabilities. So cyber hygiene scans, penetration testing, crossfeed, uh, those types of services. And then the, the biggest benefit that I think we provided was the establishment of an information sharing and analysis center where all election officials have access to ongoing threat uh, and risk information. Okay, are there any specific services that CISA should be looking to expand or add? Absolutely, I appreciate that, Representative. The first is expanding crossfeed, uh, both in scope and scale. So scanning uh, for additional connectivity, including working with voting system manufacturers to look 
uh, online if, if uh, voting systems are connected. The second is uh, looking to expand uh, remote incident response services and email security. How, how can they help support uh, better email security working with state uh, election officials? Because we see email uh, as uh, high risk uh, and exploited often uh, in these mid to small counties. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And Madam Chair, I yield back.